So as I told you in the last class, I will do few of the derivations here, like not all of them given here in the handbook is required for your school exams. Whatever is given in the textbook that is required. Okay, so we have been talking about displacement velocity acceleration. We have been talking about characteristic equation of a simple harmonic motion. We derived expression for velocity in terms of displacement. We studied, you know, how circular motion is connected with simple harmonic motion. We talked about the equations for kinetic energy and potential energy. And then when you added it, you got total energy, which happens to be a constant. And that's why you get a straight line over here. And then if you write in terms of sine, sine omega t, or cos omega t, you'll be getting this curve like this. This is your average. Average kinetic and average potential. In the last class, we talked about damped oscillations and forced oscillations. I told you a lot of mathematics. You don't have the background. So even in the textbook, they simply said that when you solve it, you will get this. Okay, so with the <clears throat> available mathematics knowledge, you will not be able to do it right now. But you know, for your numericals, you may be requiring these final formulas. Then we talked about some special cases, right? What happens when there is no damping, B becomes zero. And then we talked about what if B is zero here, right? In the forced oscillation, there is a special case called resonance. What do you mean by resonance? When the frequency, the driving frequency matches with the natural frequency, then the amplitude will be maximum. Okay, that is what is called um, resonance. In damped oscillation, the amplitude will keep on decreasing very quickly like this. <clears throat> So it's like an exponential decay. These things I told you, it's not given in your textbook. Okay. So, but it's required for an entrance exam. So that's why it's given here. This one is given in your textbook. So we talked about this in the last class, simple pendulum, right? Restoring torque. So we bring it in a form such that acceleration is equal to some constant, minus constant and displacement. Only thing instead of linear world, it is rotational world. And then we found the omega value. Once you find the omega value, you can find the uh, time period value. What if you put a, if you take a big bowl and if you put a small pebble inside this, like a marble, so it will keep on going back and forth for a few seconds. And that will also be a simple harmonic motion. So that's why it's given us bowl and ball. These are all, I think it's given your additional exercise. So some of the topics you will need some help. So I'm going to discuss floating cork, YouTube, and compression cylinder. Okay, these three things I'm going to discuss. If you understand these things, all the other things are also easy. Okay, but these things are little more, you know, advanced concepts for entrance exam okay just a sec i will close the door here
Okay, let's see. Okay, floating cork, let's discuss that first. Suppose if you have a liquid surface here, let's say there is a floating cork over here. And imagine that I give a small press on top of this. So what will happen is <clears throat> the moment you tap it on the top, Say this is length L. Let's say this is slightly compressed inside or tapped inside. So this is where it starts displacement. Which means to say that this you know, from here, if this has gone down by Y. Here also shall gone down the way. So restoring force, right? Listen carefully. The water displaced because of this extra volume, right? <clears throat> From your Archimedes principle, you know that the volume displaced, right? The weight of the liquid displaced is what is your buoyancy force. So take it down, Archimedes principle. Weight of liquid displaced is what is your force of buoyancy. Buoyancy force <coughs> or the upward thrust force. Okay, which means remember this is the extra volume which you displace the water out of this place. Okay, which means that extra liquid weight is what is going to be your restoring force. If I press it more, the force will also be higher. If I press it less, the force will be less. So that's why this is called restoring force. Y minus, you see when the displacement is pushed downwards, the force is going to be upwards. That's why this minus. Mass is nothing but density into volume. So this is density of the liquid okay, in which it is floating. What is this volume, this extra volume? Imagine that this is like a cylinder or whatever it is. So this is the area. So area into Y will give me the volume in this region. Area into height. So, but this is the height here. This mass can also be replaced with density of object. <clears throat> because this mass is for the entire object. So it means this is mass of the object, so density of the object in the acceleration. So density into volume, volume is volume of the object is this entire volume, which means it will be area into this length L.
sorry, this is G. <coughs> So it means omega square is equal to rho of liquid divided by rho of object g by y. And if I want omega, it becomes square root. Why do you think I'm interested in that? Because I am interested in time period. So t is equal to 2 pi by omega. So if I know omega, I can calculate time period. From time period, I can calculate the frequency. Any questions? So they ask you to derive the time period or frequency for a floating cork. This is what you are supposed to write. Any steps which is not clear? This is asked in the textbook. Okay. <clears throat> the numerical very often they may ask you this. Okay, so that's the first derivation I wanted to do. It's a derivation, but it's given you numerical questions. Next one, a similar question you will get is YouTube. Okay, so the oscillations in a YouTube. Initially, let's say I have the liquid in this level. So suppose if I give some extra pressure on this side, what will happen is <clears throat> this level will go up by this much and this level will go down by this much. Let's say I blow a little bit of air here. This will happen and the moment I remove this, what will happen? The water will start doing <coughs> oscillation so if i blow too much then the oscillation will also be higher if i blow very little then this height would just go a little bit and then the oscillations will die out very quickly So the moment I remove this right after blowing, this extra height of liquid, listen carefully, this extra height of liquid below this, that is what is going to push this entire liquid. You see, this is the entire liquid and this entire liquid will get pushed because of this weight over here. Okay, And when it comes here, it will not stop immediately here. It will just go a little bit higher. And then again, that will push it back this way, just like a pendulum. That means this will also undergo oscillatory motion or simple harmonic motion. What is MLG? This is a liquid, extra mass, the liquid. That is what is going to push this entire column backward this way. Y minus, if the <coughs> Y is 
positive here going upward means the force is going to be acting downwards so that's why this there is a minus here mass means we are talking about this mass extra mass so take it down properly this is a mass which is going to get pushed downwards or backwards so this is your this mass and this entire thing which is you know raised up that thing is your this mass so this is a confusing part so take it down properly this is the mass which is going to push this yellow mass backwards this mass can be written as density of liquid into volume this this volume Row, li row liquid and row liquid are same, right? If this is water, the top the top part, this one is also water. If this is mercury, right? This will also be mercury. So that means these two things are the same. <clears throat> this volume is this one. So H into the cross sectional area will be taken as capital A. Actually, you have some height here and you have some height here. If you ignore this curved path, you have some height here and some height here. So I'm going to write as 2H. So area into 2H will give me the volume over here. V extra height is area into 2Y. This is one way and this is another way, so the total will be two way. <clears throat> Any questions? So we have completed the second derivation. Please ask me if you have any confusion, anything which is not clear. So the interesting thing you will see is this H, L, all these things will appear in the top usually. So if you take the omega, it will be G by L here. Here also it will be G by H instead of L. Similarly, if you go back and check your last uh, last class derivation, 
you would have got omega is equal to g by l for the pendulum length of the pendulum so the pattern will repeat repeat the repeat like the same thing so the, this is the g by l here it is g by h here it is g by g by l here also so you can see it's the same pattern repeated everywhere okay so that was the second derivation the third derivation is also given in your book back questions imagine that this is a very big tank something like you know like a air tank which you see in the two wheeler shops but it's a huge tank and let's say there's a very small opening here suppose if i have a ball here which is not allowing any air to come out suppose if i push it little bit what will happen the ball will try to come little bit inside here but then the pressure here will increase which means this will push it back this way which means it's going to do little bit of back and forth movement and that is also simple harmonic motion since it is not insulated the heat from here will be going out so isothermal process so when i compress this small ball to a certain distance y right how much does the pressure inside here increase that will give me how much force it's going to push it on this one so this is going to be the area of cross section Not talking about torque, we are talking about force, storing force. Why delta P into area? Because change in pressure here into area will give me the extra force, which is going to push it back. Okay. So when I push it this way. the force is going to push it this way which means we put a minus here so how do i calculate this delta p you have to use your thermodynamics concepts because we said it is a isothermal process let's say initially it is p1 v1 after pushing this ball inside let's say it becomes p2 v2 so since it is isothermal isothermal means you will be using the pv is equal to constant boyle's law that means p1 v1 should be equal to p2 v2 p1 v1 p2 is the higher pressure what is v2 v2 is a new volume 
Y new volume because this ball has been compressed a little bit. So area into Y will be the volume here. So that much volume has been reduced compared to V1. So V1 is the origin volume, but the gas has been compressed such that this volume is lost, which means it's a, a smaller volume. So that means this volume will be A into Y. Why? Because the cross-section area is A and the height is Y, which means A into Y will give me Delta P is nothing but P2 minus P1 or P1 minus P2 because P2 is higher here. So since P2 is higher, I will write as P2 minus P1. So P2 can be written as from this equation, this can be brought on this side. So P1, V1 divided by V1 minus A into Y minus P1. When you multiply, when you do the cross multiplication, you get P1, P1. Minus into minus plus so P1 PA into Y. You see, this is a very, very small volume compared to this. Okay, so take it down properly. Very small volume. So this is a large volume. So that means it's okay for me to ignore this and put only V1. If you want, I can write this also. Sometimes, you know, to make it make our calculations easy, I can just simply write this V1. What are we calculating? We are talking about the delta P. Why do you need delta P? Because I want to put it in this equation. V1 area into Y divided by V1. Then M should come on this side into area. Thank you. 
You see, in each and every derivation, we will follow the same methodology. Calculate the restoring torque and then use the system concepts. Sir, and then uh, uh, omega square is equal to T A square divided by M V. Okay, very good. So omega is equal to square root of T A square by M V. Okay, very good. So you can take this A square outside, right? So it will become A root T by M V. Yeah, you can do that. You can very well do that. Yeah, if you want, you can write the A outside. Okay. A square will become A. Yeah, you're right. Any questions? You see, each and every derivation, we follow the same methodology. Okay. So study all these things, important things. So I've taken only the important points alone. The same thing, you know, I'm going to show you in the handbook. So first, in the last class, we studied this simple pendulum. Now, Get that last one. You want to copy? Okay. Copy. Check the yes, new. Okay. So coming back to this, I was telling you the methodology is pretty much the same. Okay. If you see this entire page, each and every thing will pretty much have the same restoring torque, restoring force concept. So that's why everything is given in one single page. All these things are required for entrance exams. Okay. But for now, I'm going to say we have to focus on your school exams. So this is there, simple pendulum is there. These things involve some electric field and all, you know, you can study it only in North Pole standard. So except for this, you can study all the other things. But what we discussed today was floating cork, then YouTube. And then this compression cylinder. Okay. So whether you compress it with this or whether you compress it like this, you'll get the same answer. Any questions in this four derivations? So even though I say derivation, it is there for your it is there in the numericals. Okay, let me show you where it is. Okay. Some of the things, if you know that it is there, you will have more confidence. It might be asked in your exams also. Of course, the pendulum is already given in your textbook in the theory. Yeah, look at this. A cylindrical piece of cork of density of base area A and height H floats in a liquid of density rho L. The cork is depressed slightly and then released. Show that the cork oscillates up and down simple harmonically with the period T is equal to 2 pi square root of H rho pi rho L G, where rho is the density of the cork. So this is what we derived right now, the very first derivation the floating cork so if you go and see row of liquid so the time period happens to be row of object divided by row of liquid l by g so let's see if we got the same thing here. 
2 pi square root of h by g rho of the object divided by rho of liquid so okay look at this one end of a u tube containing mercury is connected to a suction pump and the other end to a atmosphere a small pressure difference is maintained between the two columns show that when the suction pump is removed the column of mercury in u tube ex executes simple harmonic motion so that's what we did right now here in the second one so the u tube So whenever you see an equation which is following this characteristic equation of SHM, we say that it will follow simple harmonic motion. The last one is, the last one which we discussed was this one. The air chamber of volume V has a neck area of cross section A. This is a cross section A into which a ball is ball of mass M just fits and can move up and down without any friction. Show that when the ball is pressed down a little and released, it executes as such a obtain an expression for the time period of the oscillation, assuming pressure volume variations are to be isothermal. Of here to be isothermal. So that's what we said. You know, at the beginning itself, we said isothermal processes. Anyone getting a doubt here? Here I have P1 AY and here I'm having V1 into AY, V1 minus AY. Here I said this is very small, so we ignore this, okay? But here I didn't ignore this, why? Because I told you many times the story of LED TV and chocolate, okay? So when you buy a chocolate, five rupees is a big thing, but when you are buying LED TV, Five rupees is a small, small thing. Okay, so that means compared to V1, this is a very, very small value. But compared to no, I, I don't have anything else in the top, which means this value should be kept. You should not ignore this. Whereas here it's okay to ignore. You don't following what I'm saying? Yes, no. Yes, sir. Okay. okay, let's see what else I can reach here. Okay, so coming back to the handbook, as I told you in this page, I completed four of the derivations in your textbook. <clears throat> All the other things are not there in the textbook, but it will be there for your entrance exams. Same thing over here. So the bottom part of the spring concepts are not there in the textbook. So oscillations, whatever we covered, all the important topics have been covered. Any topic which you think, sir, they taught me in the school, but I have difficulty. I'm not able to understand anything with that. In oscillations. Because oscillations is a huge chapter. And uh, I'm just trying my best. I don't know what else is remaining here. Let's quickly go through it. I think last class itself I did that. So later part everything is covered. So the starting part I think. OK. 
Yes, I need some water just to see. Any of you, anything which you tried or anything which was taught for you, but you have difficulty understanding it, anything like that? No such thing. Okay, so what are we trying to find that of the D I and the constant D. Okay. Any periodic function can be expressed as a superposition of sine and cosine functions of different time periods with suitable coefficients. So, nobody is answering my question. So, if you tell me that, sir, this is there for my school exams, means we can discuss that. All the important things I have covered. Any topic which you did not understand? Yeah, nobody answers. Okay, so I don't think I'm getting any response. What should I do? Should I get started with waves? <clears throat> because we have very little time. So I think yeah. some of... Hmm? Some of you said next week you have your exam starting. So I'm sure you will have waves also. So I thought we'll get started with waves. Is that okay, everyone? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Okay. Go through your school notes, okay? School syllabus. If something is missing, we can discuss that. Okay, I don't have any issues. But some of the things you will need a little more, you know, mathematical understanding. We'll try our best. Okay, so I'm going to go to the waves. Oscillations and waves is taught in most of the schools, even some of the schools, you know, even though they may skip some of the thermodynamics and thermal properties related topics, most of them, they will definitely take oscillations and waves. The reason for that is you will get a lot of connection in your 12th standard. Okay. So, so as a consequence of this, we'll be studying, you know, waves in light, waves in um, 
and then oscillations in magnetism, electricity, all these things. Okay, so that's why oscillations and waves are very important for your 12th standard. Okay, so study them properly. Thermodynamics, I don't think there is any connection in your 12th standard. Okay, only if you take college, if you take, you know, mechanical engineering in this business. Okay, so waves, let's see what I can say about waves. A simple explanation would be to take a go to a pond or you, to, you know take some water in the bucket you drop a small stone okay the moment you drop the stone inside the pond what will happen you will see some ripples so what you are seeing is nothing but the disturbance here that disturbance is transferred to the next particles from there it is going to the next particle so it's traveling in all the directions it's traveling this way it's traveling this way it's traveling this way okay in fact it is actually circular which means it's traveling this way okay so this is what you will see from the top okay so that's what we would call it as ripples but if you see it from the side side of the bucket okay what you will see is when you drop the stone you will see something like this so what this means is this lines the ripples basically represent your peaks okay so the empty spaces, the gap between the two ripples is what is your valley. Peaks and valleys or crests and troughs. Okay, so take it down. This is your peak, this is your valley. Or another name is you can call it as crest and trough. Okay, so both are the same. Only thing you are seeing this from the top view and this is from the side view. So when you take a wave like this, so wave is nothing but an energy transfer mechanism. Okay, either you can call it as transferring the disturbance from here, but more accurately, you can call this energy transfer mechanism. So take it down. Somebody asks you, what is a wave? Energy transfer mechanism. So you see, light is also a wave. So the light from the sun, it is traveling millions of kilometers and it's still giving us the energy. Okay. So if it was not for the sun, life will not survive in the earth. Okay. So they say that maybe the sun is going to be there for another 4.5 billion years. So probably we don't have to worry about next 4.5 billion years. Okay. So after that, obviously, you know, if the sun is not there, we cannot have plants. And if there is no plants, human life is not possible or animal life is not possible. So this gap between this and this, you are going to call it as lambda wavelength. This is same as calling between this and this. If you calculate this distance and this distance will be lambda. Or you can also take it from this point to this point. And that will also be lambda. Take it down properly. So what this means is either you can take it from peak to peak or valley to valley or from mean position to mean position. 
but there is a small catch here. So when you say mean position to mean position, it's possible that you will make the mistake of taking here, but then it has to be in face. So you see, everyone listen carefully. So <clears throat> what's happening here is when the ball, when the stone is dropped inside the water, this particle starts vibrating back and forth. And that, that energy is transferred to the next particle. So this also starts vibrating back and forth. Okay. So that means this energy is transferred to this, this energy is transferred to this. So these particles are going up and down. Okay. So when I say going up and down, when this particle is trying to you know, come down, this particle is also trying to come down. That means this particle and this particle are in phase. When this particle is ready to go up, this particle is also ready to go up, which means this particle and this particle, we say it is in phase. But look at this. If you consider a particle over here, this is trying to go up, whereas this particle is trying to go down, whereas this particle is what is trying to go up, which means you should not take this point. This is your complete cycle. Okay. The oscillation, if you start from here, if I go here and if I come here, this is not one full oscillation. You have to go back here and then come back here. So this is what is one full oscillation. So similarly here also, you have to go in the positive direction and then go in, into the negative direction and then come back. So then how come here it is peak to peak? Well, you can... Suppose if you start the pendulum at this point, you go all the way here, and then you come back. So this is something like your peak to peak. So it's going all the way, passing through the mean position and going to the other extreme. And then it's coming back, it's passing through the mean position, and then coming back to its original position. So, so there is a very important connection between oscillations and waves. Okay, so take it down, very important. <clears throat> In the oscillation, how many particles are vibrating? If I take a pendulum, is it one particle or a thousand particles? I'll keep waiting until somebody answers. So if you want me to continue the class, please answer. Otherwise, I'll keep sitting. In the oscillating pendulum, how many particles are vibrating? Sir, I think all the parties, the thousand particles. The pendulum, how many, <clears throat> how many particles are there? Is it there is one bob or like one ball or many balls? Hmm? There is only one, one particle one. here, right? Then how are you saying thousand? So there is only one particle going back and forth. However, in the case of water particles, the water wave, this is one water molecule. This is going up and down. This is going up and down. This is going up and down. So that means make a note. In the oscillation, it is one particle. Okay. Example pendulum, right? One particle is oscillating. Something like you are, if, when I say one particle, I mean one ball or one bob. Whereas in the case of wave, right? Example, water wave. There are infinite number of particles. Okay. 
you can say vibrating oscillating right So that's the difference between oscillation and a wave. So wave is in a way it's like you know many particles oscillating at the same time. Only thing they are not in phase. Not all the particles are in phase. So when this particle is going up, this particle might be coming down. This particle might be going up. Okay. So I have a small illustration or demonstration in the lab, but I'll see. You know, maybe I'll try to show you. Right now, chemistry sir is teaching inside the classroom, so I cannot get in there. So maybe I'll keep that ready in the next class. Okay, so only if you show some interest. I will have some motivation to take the class. Okay, so please answer. Otherwise, I absolutely I don't have any motivation at all to take the class. So it's very very boring to do, take this class. Nobody is answering. Okay, let's see. Lambda is equal to. So coming back to this, there is a small derivation. So the time taken for one full oscillation, t, t is the time period. Lambda is the wavelength. Okay, for one full oscillation, wavelength is the distance. So if I want velocity, velocity is equal to distance by time. What is the distance of one full oscillation? Lambda. What is the time taken by one full oscillation? Capital T. That means this is a very important formula. V is equal to lambda by T. But what is one by T? It is frequency. That means V is equal to lambda by t or lambda into nu is what is called wave equation. So very important. Okay, so they may ask you a simple question like this. Next one you should know is, of course, time period is equal to one by frequency, right? Or frequency is equal to one by t. You can say that it's the same thing. Really, omega can be written as two pi by t. Why? Because angular angular velocity. Angular velocity is radians per second. Angular velocity. Sometimes it's called as angular frequency, so don't get confused. It's the same thing. Radiance per second. So this is called frequency. Similar, similarly, we have something called 
wave number. The wave number is defined as one by lambda. Waves and one unit length. Okay, very good. So, how many waves you have in one unit length? Okay. Because this will be in meters. Yes, sir. Starting chemistry. Studies in chemistry. Okay. So it means in one meter, how many waves you have? So suppose if you have wave like this, if you calculate one meter curve, how many waves are there? Okay. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Sorry. From here to here it is one, two, three. Four, five, six. So approximately six. So it means the wave number here will be six per meter. Similar to this omega, there is something called angular wave number. Okay. So similar to frequency, you have wave number. Similar to angular frequency, you have angular wave number. So we here we said 2 pi by t here we'll say 2 pi by lambda okay so what this means is how many radians i have in one meter <coughs> angular wave number This, <clears throat> the next topic, you will need some help from the experimental demonstration I'll try to show you. So, <clears throat> as I told you, there is not one particle oscillating. There are many particles oscillating at the same time, but each one is going up and down at a different time. So it means it's not only a function of time, it is also a function of X. So you see, along this direction that is your x at a given time where is this particle here where is this particle so that means y is a function of x and t so take it down y is a displacement so from the mean position how much is the particle higher or lower okay. that is your displacement and that happens to be a function of x and t so x is the location And T is the time instrument. So this will be written as A sine kx minus omega t. Okay. So in the oscillation, listen carefully, very important. In oscillation, we wrote it as y is equal to a sine omega t. But now here you have an additional kx. Why? Can anyone tell me why do you think you have this extra thing? Here it was one particle. Here you have many particles. So that means it is a function of time and also a function of location. So that means you will get Kx. You know, understanding the difference, why you are getting this. So this and this very important. So try to understand it together. Here it is many particles. At different locations. Okay. 
any questions why there is some minus this is bit confusing okay so we'll talk about it as we progress only when i show you an example you'll understand why there is some minus i told you k is nothing but 2 pi by lambda angular a number <coughs> Omega, I told you, two pi by t. Listen carefully. This might be very confusing for you, okay? But it's nothing confusing here because you have to understand that for one lambda, the radian is two pi. How much it is for two two centimeter, three centimeter, point five centimeter. So depending upon the length, right? I can calculate how many radians I will get. Similarly, look at this. For one time period, right? Suppose the time period is five seconds. When five seconds is completed, it will be giving me two pi radians. But if I had ten seconds, how much will it be? So this is in meters. This is also in meters. So meter meter cancels. So I'll be getting in radians. This is in seconds. This is also in seconds. So second second cancels. So I'll be getting in radians. Are you following? Why you are getting it like this? So take it down properly. K becomes two pi by lambda. Omega becomes two pi by t. So what I will get is I'll be getting it. The entire thing will be in radians. <clears throat> so inside the bracket, the units will be radians. Only then you can take sine, cos, and. <clears throat> If I want, I can take two pi by lambda commonly out. Two pi is taken out commonly. Lambda is taken out, which means that I need to multiply by lambda. What is lambda by t? Distance by time. What is that? Anybody? <clears throat> Can anyone tell me what is distance by time? Velocity. Very good. Okay, so this is one important form of the equation. This is another important form of the equation. And if I take two pi by lambda, I'll be getting another important form of the equation. The same equation, if I take two pi by t commonly out. From here. So if I take two pi by t commonly out, I'll be getting t in the top here. Two pi by t commonly taken out, so t is correct. So x by
So T is capital T. So you know that lambda by T. So velocity is equal to lambda by T. So if I want T, I can write as lambda by T. What is the mistake I'm doing here? Two pi by T is taken out. So two pi by T, if I take it out. Oh, there is a lambda in the bottom. So t by lambda. So t by lambda means it is x by lambda. So v will come in the bottom. Okay, so this is another important form of the equation. So what I completed here was this one, this one, this one. This I need to talk about it. So what I completed here was this one. Okay. So I'll try to complete at least this first page soon in the next class. And then we'll talk about the later part. Okay, so I'll need two more classes to complete this. Okay, so after that we'll do some more numericals. So for now, if you have doubts, stay back. Otherwise, you are free to go. Thanks. Thank you, sir.